It's a 45 minute session and we have a lot to cover so I'm going to dive right into it. There is growing concern and awareness around the world, around the state of coral reefs at the moment. There is a lot of attention being paid to this issue and yet what we haven't seen a lot of is how that translates into increased financing for coral reefs and I'd love to get your thoughts on, on why that is. So David, over to you. Oh, thanks very much, Klaus. Um, so, uh, yes. All of you know, you know, coral reefs are under significant threat, and um, you know, there's a, a predictions that up to 90% of them might uh, might uh, go away after in the next 30 years or so. So this is obviously an urgent issue, and um, um, the Conservation Finance Alliance, which is an organization that's focused on improving awareness and, and knowledge around uh, conservation finance activities, has been working with the International Coral Reef Initiative, ICRI. The Pacific Ocean Finance Program. Uh, we are funded by World Bank and the Global Environment Facility and implemented through the Pacific Island Foreign Fisheries Agency and the Office of Pacific Ocean Commissioner. Uh, we are funding a, a wide range of activities at the moment um, to, to look at innovating finance for the Pacific Islands region. Um, but just to jump to, um, look, it may be just semantics, but if we are constantly talking about sustainable finance, I think we're missing the point. There's no such thing. What we need to do is have an integrated and holistic approach to financial capital. Around 2017, when Paul came back from a trip where he saw firsthand a lot of these huge issues um, and the devastation of, of many different reefs, that we doubled down our focus in this area and have been, since then, putting a lot of emphasis in a number of different places. Urgent action is needed and um, in a lot of different ways, and um, really look forward to hearing what everybody else is up to as well that we can partner with. Christian, I want to turn to you because a key consideration in investment is always going to be the involvement of the private sector. What do you see as your role in mobilizing coral refinancing? One observation that we all have is that we pretty much know what the solutions are to, to, to address the issue of coral reef, uh, you know, a damage that we do to coral reefs. Uh, we know what, how much money we need to, 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 to invest to, to solve the problems. Uh, and for some reason, we're never able to fill the gap. And there, the private sector is often called upon to try and, and fill that gap. Simply, most of the conservation projects uh, that we're offering to finance uh, to the private sector are not offering the adequate uh, return for the risks that is taken. And therefore, the private capital is not coming and not, cannot play that role that it, it should be able, I mean, it could, uh, it could play. Do you believe that coral reefs are a good investment? If you could show us your thoughts on that. Now, that is a strong response. There are exactly three no's in the room, and I would ask you to be prepared to back up your answer there, because we may well come back to you. But it looks like the eyes have it by quite a large margin. Sort of to put this to the panel, it was alluded to the fact that actually investing in conservation projects isn't a very good idea because it doesn't give you return. Well, as a biologist and as somebody who's trying really hard to conserve coral reefs, that's heartbreaking to hear. What do you, what do you want from us in order to make this success, successful? So in 2050, when my kids are my age, I can say we did something, not because it was a good return on an investment, but because we needed to save corals. If all we thought about was uh, coral reefs in terms of climate change and climate change finance, climate change finance is quite a large beast. It, it may not be enough, but compared to what we are working in in, in the blue um, and coral reef space, it's giant, and we are dropping the ocean in comparison. So I believe what we need to do is leverage off of that um, to, to the best extent possible. Are there, and if there are, what kind of solutions do you see in terms of investing or making equity investments to solve the problems of uh, ocean. Thank you. you know, if you put in place a PPP structure to manage the marine protected areas, obviously you have, you know, uh, uh, you have a, an equity component. You have a company that will provide a service of, of managing, and then it will, this service will generate revenues and it will be reallocated to different parties. So there will be a vehicle where there will be an equity component and, and the private sector will invest in, in, that, in that part. Government often will co-invest as well. Thank you so much. All right. This has been 
a whirlwind 45 minutes. There has been a lot to unpack here. We have barely scratched the surface. I would encourage all of you who are interested in this topic to please come and talk to the panel, come and learn from their expertise and their experience in this area. And with that, the only thing that I have left to say to you is please join me in thanking our panel of experts for their insights and for their contributions.